G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Uh, today, gonna park the draft stuff for a little bit. Obviously, been doing a bit of draft content for you. Uh, the last two or three videos on the channel, gonna park that for today and take an early look at 2023 and have a crack at some predictions. Obviously, it's far too early to really be doing this, but I, for some reason, like to do one uh, right before the, the true off season hits, right after the draft. So after this video, we'll get back to the draft stuff. Uh, and then, then it's the off season in earnest, and uh, we'll have you know two months of twiddling our thumbs waiting for the new season. So I'll have a crack at a predictions video today, and then do a proper one again right before the season, probably after the JLT or NAB or whatever it's called now. Today's format I'm going to do a little bit differently. I am going to arrange like all of the teams into a tier maker in terms of how I rank them, if that makes sense, in different categories of teams, and then I'm going to show you my full 18 team ladder uh, towards the end of the video and talk you through some of my choices to address the elephant in the room yes i did have a haircut and yes i have shaved so finally looking a little bit less homeless i uh, thought you know warmer weather summer coming up started to try to look a little bit more presentable i honestly haven't been able to get rid of the mullet entirely so at the moment i've got this like half short back and size half mullet thing going on i don't know looks pretty bad let's just roll with it but with summer just around the corner, I've uh, decided to hit the gym again, work off some of that post-Europe belly that I had, uh, trying to get back into some shape. I don't really know why. I mean, summer just seems like a good time to do it because, you know, you're going to be at the pool more often or at the beach more often. And with that, you're going to be doing a little bit more manscaping, or at least you should. If you haven't started already, you should check out manscaped.com for the variety of products to help you level up your male grooming routine. Like I said, during summer, your, your rig's just gonna be out a little bit more. So good time to try and get into shape, hit the gym, uh, but also make sure you're keeping up with your manscaping. Given they sponsor the channel, you can get 20% off and free shipping on all of their products. You just simply have to use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout and you get 20% off and free shipping, which is a great bargain and a great way to start looking your best as we get into summer. I believe these guys are now available at Woolies here in Australia as well, but do yourselves a favor, use the code and you can get 20% off and free shipping anyway, and you get it delivered to your door. Anyway, it is now time to crack into the tier maker. So I'm going to sort of rank each team in each category on based on, you know, how I sort of rate the team generally. And then I'm going to have a crack at the end of the video at putting it into an actual 18 team ladder with, you know, a couple of bolters and sliders as there always is in any, uh, in any AFL season, of course. So we'll start off uh, with the contenders. Uh, of course, below that, I've got top four chances, finals aspirants, no man's land, and spoon territory. So those are the five categories of teams. So the obvious contenders are start off with Geelong. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. I think, uh, you know, their list profile would suggest they're due for a decline soon, but I don't think that is going to be this year. At the very worst, they'd probably slide out of the top four, and even then it would be like fifth or sixth, I'd imagine. But, you know, Geelong were clearly the best team this year, so you have to put them as a contender. And similarly, the runners-up this year in the Swans, uh, I don't see them going anywhere. Again, they could slide out of the top four, but genuinely one of the favorites to win the flag next year with their list profile, the fact that they're pretty good at the MCG, etc. They're only going to get it better, the Swans. A couple of obvious spoon contenders. I'll start with uh, GW West. I have been outspoken about how concerned I am for them going forward. You lose Taranto and Hopper out of a team that was 6-16, six and 16, I think, this year. Uh, for me, they are potentially going to win the spoon this year. And I think North Melbourne are a chance to go back-to-back. -back. They might have improved their list a little bit, getting a couple of established players in. They'll get a couple of high draft picks. Uh, and even with Clarkson, they were so bad this year that I don't have faith that they're necessarily above this tier yet. So a chance for the wooden spoon for sure. The other contenders, I've got Melbourne. I just rate them so highly. Um, finished second, went out in straight sets. A blip in the radar perhaps. Uh, I don't think I'm concerned for them long term. They could, you know, have another down year, but as far as I'm concerned, they're a major contender for next season. And I think we're going to rate Collingwood in that range as well. This one's a little less set in stone, obviously, because they bounced so dramatically up the ladder, uh, but they got so close to a grand final and uh, played some really good footy against the top teams of the competition. And again, their list profile suggests that don't see a decline for them. Uh, there's so many good players in their prime and obviously young players set to improve. So similar to Sydney, can't really see them declining, although it is possible. Carlton, I think, are a decent top four chance. I think we saw from their best footy when they went eight and two in the first half of the year. Yes, they declined in the second half of the year, but I think there is so much top end talent and they've consolidated that over time with their list management moves. 
I think they're going to improve, and uh, I'd be shocked if they don't play finals, to be honest. I'm going to also put Fremantle in that range. Obviously, had a fantastic year of improvement this year. I don't rate them as a contender just yet. It's a little bit early for them, but they're around that mark. Who else we got here as top four chances? They have to say Richmond, Taranto, and Hopper into a team that finished seventh. Uh, they're a chance for the top four, absolutely, and obviously a resilient side, a lot of experience, um, a lot of established quality. Dusty Martin playing on. Definitely a chance for the top four. Probably not a lock, but they're a chance. And of course, the Brisbane Lions, you know, they made a prelim and then were top two, like, was it two or three years in a row? Or certainly top four for three years in a row. Obviously, adding Josh Dunkley, I still think they're a top four chance. Again, question marks on them going really deep into September, so I don't have them quite on that contender category yet. We'll talk a little bit about some finals aspirants. I'm going to put the dogs in finals aspirants. I've lost a little bit of faith in them. Yes, their best footy is elite. It's premiership quality, but they were a long way off it last year, so I don't think they've earned... They could make the top four, but I don't think they're on the same rank as the teams I got ahead of them. I think Port Adelaide are a finals aspirant. I actually think they will make the finals, which I'll get to later in this video. Uh, but I think they had a down year, came good at the end, had some really good acquisitions in Horn Francis and Rioli, and uh, I just got a, I got a feeling about them. This might be a little bit controversial, but I've actually got Adelaide and the Gold Coast Suns both in finals aspirants. And the reason being is... That's probably a little bit generous, but obviously Gold Coast weren't that far off the mark. They got so much young talent, so much upside. I don't think they'll play finals, but I think they're good enough to put, to ask the question of the teams right above them. So they might finish similar to where they did last year, but I think they're sort of getting towards that, that sort of part of the ladder. Obviously on paper, I don't think that the Adelaide or the Suns are as good as the Dogs or Port, but they're closing the gap. And particularly Adelaide, I just think they're so... I think they play so well above what I would rate their best 22 quality as. So that one's more just about the respect I have for Adelaide that I think they'll actually get closer to finals than they should on talent. But yeah, that's just more of a gut feel. I've completely abandoned one section here. There's three teams here left that I'm going to put in no man's land and one in spoon territory. I'm going to put Essendon a little bit in no man's land. I don't think they're a realistic shout for the spoon, to be honest. There's, uh, they obviously had a really down year and uh, so much youth on the list still. So I think it's going to be a little bit before they're going to really be back into finals contention. I could be wrong on that. New coach in Brad Scott. I think Brad Scott did pretty well with a list that wasn't super strong in, with North Melbourne for you know a decade or whatever it was. I have faith that he will get them to a good place where they're competitive, but not in the first season. So I think they're going to swing somewhere between you know the bottom four and um, the teams that are really pushing for the eight. Hawthorne, I'm going to say, are a spoon contender. They are now the youngest list in the league. I don't think they'll win the spoon, but they're a contender. And obviously offloading Jager O'Meara, Tom Mitchell, Jack Gunston, lose a lot of experience out of that. And um, I think they're a long way off genuinely playing finals from what I've seen, but I do have faith that they're going to come back strong when they do come. But I think it's been a pretty clear strategy. Offload some of the experienced players, get in the youth, expose them, and I think they're going to have a bit of short-term pain. The Saints are a little bit in no man's land for me. It's probably a little bit harsh to have them below Adelaide and Gold Coast because realistically they could easily finish higher than both of those sides. But they're a little bit no man's landy for me because they've got a new coach coming in and uh, I don't know if I rate the quality of their best 22 strongly enough anymore to really push for finals. Yes, they started the year well last year. Maybe they're a finals aspirant. Maybe no man's land. It's probably, it's probably too harsh a title, to be honest. But I just don't know where to place them. And I think I say that every year with St. Kilda. They're a little bit of an enigma. They're not going to finish in the bottom four. They're too good for that. But it's too competitive to put them in the finals race. I'm probably going to cop some heat for that one. But I just don't see it. And finally, the Eagles as well. This is a tough one. I, I get into the same trap every year and I rate the Eagles higher than when they eventually finish. I'm going to say no man's land. The reason being is there was too much adversity last year to get a real read on where they were at. So I just don't see with a better injury list next year how that team can finish bottom two again. They could finish bottom four, absolutely. But the reason I say no man's land is I feel I get this vibe from West Coast next year that they're going to show up and be good against some crap teams, belt them, get a few wins under the belt, get some percentage, and then lose all the meaningful games and uh, still sort of languish in the nether regions of the ladder. So I still think they're bottom six. 
and they're still really in the early stages of a rebuild. So they're kind of no man's landy for me. Maybe I've got these categories wrong, but that's the way I see it. So I'm a little bit more optimistic on West Coast. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if St Kilda St Kilda should finish higher than West Coast. Certainly a stronger best 22 to 25. But for me, they still both fit in this category of don't really think you're anywhere near good enough for finals anymore. Um, but you're probably not going to win the spoon either. So it's kind of a shitty category. So now we'll have a crack at putting in the ladder all together. And I must admit, I haven't gone straight off the rankings. I've mixed it up a little bit here because there will be surprises. There will be teams that shoot up into the you know premiership contention and there will be teams that drop out of the finals unexpectedly. And I can't resist it. I usually get it wrong every year, but I've had a crack at a couple here. So we'll start with the top four. I've got Sydney topping the ladder because of their upside. Uh, and because of their consistency, whether or not they win the flag or not, I'm not too sure. But I've got them, and I've got Carlton in second. How much of a bold call is that? Because on paper, I don't think they're stronger than a Collingwood or a Geelong or even a Melbourne. But I have to pick a team to bolt up, and I think they have a lot of green ticks. Um, you know, with their top end talent, their spine, in particular their midfield now, it's getting more mature. This could be the year for Carlton. Collingwood Geelong making up third and fourth. That's fairly self-explanatory. I've got Melbourne, Richmond, Fremantle, and Port Adelaide as my next four as the teams that sneak into the eight. I'm feeling positive about Port Adelaide right now. Fremantle will probably stabilize. I don't think they're going to improve just enough again to really push into that contender category. Richmond with their acquisitions, uh, they, they're only going to get stronger, and that's about where they finished anyway. And Melbourne, I just have sliding a little for no real reason. I still think they could win the flag, but obviously their form trended the wrong direction towards the end of the year. So they might just stagnate a little before coming back for another shot at a flag next year which leaves me with one shock omission from my top eight. And this is just me having a crack, to be honest. Brisbane in ninth. That's a pretty big call because they're a strong team that's only getting stronger. But one team's got to miss. And for some reason, I'm just picking Brisbane this year, guys. So let me have it. I don't really have a strong argument for it. The Bulldogs, Gold Coast, Adelaide, and St. Kilda will make up that next sort of log jam of teams that aren't quite good enough to make the eight, but will really get close. West Coast and Essendon again, probably that next tier down, uh, just not quite good enough to make it. Still sort of prioritizing youth and development, I would imagine. And then your bottom three, I've got Hawthorne North and GWS as your probable three spoon contenders, but I've gone with GWS uh, just because I think that is, they're bleeding, you know. Yes, they do have a fair bit of quality still on the list and I could have that horribly wrong, but... It's, there's a bit of stank about the Giants at the moment. So there you have it, guys. That is my crack at a very, very early you know, ladder prediction. I'm probably going to do a very different one uh, by the time the season rolls around and I've got new opinions and we've seen the preseason and I've been misled by preseason results and injuries and stuff like that. But that is my crack. Let me know in the comments what you hated about it and what you maybe didn't hate. I'm sure it will be mostly negative, as it always is. But bring it on, guys. This is all a bit of fun. And let me know what your top eight is for next year. Thanks for watching, guys. Always subscribe to the channel if you are new. I always really appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.